Hi everyone, I feel like it's become a little bit of a ritual to start uh, vlog type videos sitting on the floor while I'm getting ready for the day. And I think I may have just dropped some concealer on the floor, but let's pretend that that didn't happen. The world is taking steps in the right direction at the moment, I feel, but everything still feels rather heavy, does it not? So today I wanted to sit down and talk to you about some things that I've been enjoying recently. Some items, some things that I have been reading, some things that I've been watching, things perhaps that you might like to check out that may bring a smile to your face. And also I'm going to cook or bake, rather I should say, my favorite bread today, which is focaccia. So I'm gonna show you that recipe. Um, before I put more makeup on my face, one of my favorite things that I wanted to mention, and I think I may have mentioned them in a video before, but it will have been probably nearly a year ago now. It's these face masks, and I wanted to give them a shout out because they're amazing if you wear glasses. They're made by a seller on Etsy who is called Face Mask Queen, and they have long wires along the top. So if you're just looking for a cloth mask, let me demonstrate. They come in all of these really cool patterns. As I said, they have a wire here, so you can press this right into your nose, which fits the mask firmly to your face, which means that when you put your glasses on, nothing steams up at all. They're great. So if you've been having this struggle too, because the struggle is real, I'll link her Etsy in the description box down below. We've had a lot of snow recently, which has been very beautiful, but it has meant that I have not been outside very much at all. Um, but something that I thought was cute, and many people may not find this cute, so I'm sorry if you are one of those people. Um, but when I went to Hampstead Heath a couple of weeks ago, I saw some rats. Now, I know rats are not often thought of, as adorable, but I just really wanted to share this this moment, this rat moment that I witnessed uh, on the heath. They hang out around the ponds where it's wetter, and there was this one rat who did the most adorable, hilarious jump, which I will insert on the screen. <laughs> I just thought for some reason it was cute and I wanted to share. These are the things that we're sharing these days, okay? We're sharing rat jumps because mostly it's just me at home working, hugging this water bottle, which is also a favorite. It was a gift from my mum-in-law for Christmas. It's from John Lewis. If it still exists online, I will link it down below. It's the softest thing ever. So sitting, hugging this hot water bottle, and watching clips from Would I Lie To You on YouTube, especially ones with Olivia Coleman, because she really makes me giggle, or watching um, Daisy Mae Cooper's Instagram stories, the, the TikToks that she cross posts, because for some reason she just really, really makes me giggle. Right, Boris, little question for you, right? You've just put a nation in lockdown, yeah? A five, right? And you're telling me, yeah? that you can only go to work if it's critical. What does that even mean? Like what what job is a critical job? What if I'm like a cat trainer and cat, I got a train, lives in Berkshire, I'm like train him up to ride a bicycle or whatever, because that's what cat trainers do, right? Chris is gonna go to me, oh, well, can't you do it via Zoom? I'm like, no, I can't do it via Zoom because I haven't trained the cat to use Zoom yet. <laughs> Just, I can't believe that I shared a rat jump. Welcome to 2021. Okay, so favorite things, this hat. This hat is by Seaburger. And I think one of the reasons that it's my favorite, apart from the fact that I love the hat itself, is because I bought a different version of this in green. Um, I also have it in red. Uh, and also in navy blue, this one is in black. It makes me feel like a train conductor, as Mr M sometimes jokes that I look like Mario when I'm dressed like this. 
I don't mind. It's a fashion choice. I wear these because I have alopecia if you're new to my channel, but I bought the first green one when I was on a weekend away with Lauren and Lauren and Jean and Mercedes. And we had such a delightful time. And I swear, whenever I put one of these on, which is most days, I remember that weekend. And I was watching the vlog that Lauren made of that weekend the other day. And it was making me happy and sad in probably equal measure and if you never saw that vlog when she uploaded it which was from November 2019 I will link that in the description box down below I miss my friends speaking of clothes if we're going to do this in category order I bought a pair of trousers the other day um I tend not to buy fast fashion stuff anymore wherever possible um instead i buy from companies like thought and lucy and yak and run and fly and um, but these i knew that i would wear them forever i love them and the color makes me so 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 happy uh, it's from a company called lioness which i never heard of before and they are the i think they're an australian company these balloon jeans which are so comfortable um, and they're in this cobalt type colour and they have um, this white stitching which I think is wonderful and holding it like this is not showing you what they look like at all so please let me insert a picture of what they look like on. They have just brought me joy recently so that's something that I wanted to mention. Let me put some lipstick on. Okay, other objects. I decided I wanted to purchase a stylus for my iPhone for comfort when um, typing, might help a little bit, um, but also for doodling and experimenting with thumbnails and all of that. So I got this one, which is a Honsky. It came in a set of three for 12 99 So it is super, super affordable. Um, it doesn't come with this, which is maybe an even bigger favorite that I wanted to mention. Um, I find pens difficult to hold because I have extra dactyly. Um, if they've got grips on them, that's great, but this is obviously really thin and really slippy, so it's harder for me to hold. So I was looking for a grip that I could buy to put on this stylus, like I would with an ordinary biro, but then someone recommended to me on Instagram that I should buy Sugru. I assume that that is how it's pronounced, like sounding like super glue, Sugru. And this stuff is amazing. So it is moldable glue and you can use it for a whole variety of things and it comes in all of these cool colors. So I use the yellow one here. I've got a set of all these different colors. Each one comes in a little packet like this. So you open it, it feels like plasticine and then it's this much inside and you can mold it to whatever you like. So I put it around the stylus and then held it so that it could have the imprint of my grip on it. And then you leave it to harden for 24 to 48 hours and it's, it's on there. It's not going to budge. And what's really cool about this is that you can use it to repair things too. So I hope this is the quality content that you signed up for. The other day, I broke my scissors. I don't know how I did it. I think they must have being pressed up against something in the dishwasher, but the plastic had snapped at the bottom. So I put Sugru around these bits here and it holds together the breakage. You can use it for wires, you can use it for teacups, you can use it for whatever. As I said, it hardens and doesn't budge and then it's dishwasher proof as well. So this can go in the dishwasher and this is not gonna come off again. Don't we love repairing things? Very exciting. Final two objects that I've been enjoying before we get on to baking bread and then I can talk to you about things I don't have to hold such as TV shows and films. I have been loving this candle. Um, I love the pot that it comes in. I love the smell of it. It is bay and rosemary. It's from a company called Sintervol, which I hadn't heard of before, but my aunt got me this for my birthday. But it reminds me of a candle that I used to have that I bought Kew Gardens. Um, I think again, I think that was December or November 2019, so just before everything else happened. Um, so I think with like watching the vlog of Our Weekend Away, this reminds me of one of the last outings that we had going to Kew Gardens um, and I fell in love with it. It was so beautiful. I'm gonna put some pictures here because it was the height of autumn and it was amazing. And I bought that candle and every time I smelt that candle, it reminded me of going there and then this also brings back those memories, which I know is not translatable to you <laughs> to you watching. You're not gonna buy this candle and smell it and think of Kew Gardens, but memories aside, 
the smell of it is it's so fresh and it reminds me I guess of like a, a herb garden or something um it feels very homely and I, and I would recommend one of the things that I miss as alongside everything else is is going to TK Maxx and sniffing candles so if that's something that you also miss maybe you identify and my favorite book that I have read so far this year is 50 Sounds by Polly Barton. This is published by Fitzcarraldo. This one here is a proof, as you can see. I have underlined, well, maybe you can't see that I've underlined a lot, but you may be able to tell by how wide this book is now that I really poured over this book. I enjoyed it so, so much. I have read quite a few of Polly's books that she's translated. She's a Japanese translator. She is English, but she translates things into English from Japanese. And this is about her moving to Japan for the first time. Learning language, though she's hesitant to use the word learning, how she absorbs language. It almost feels like she's wading around in language soup and talking about it. And she's talking about the uncertainty of translation, how experiences are completely tied up in your, our understanding of words and she will always associate certain Japanese phrases with the first time that she heard them which obviously we probably do when we're acquiring our first language too it's just that we're so young that those memories are things we probably can't remember but acquiring or learning or struggling to comprehend a language as an adult and approaching it in a very academic way means that our process of absorbing the words is very, very different. And we can remember those, those experiences where we first heard a word and how we came to understand them and how that does turn us into children again and how there's a lot of room for shame and misunderstanding and making a bit of a tit of ourselves and how that is okay. I love this so much. The way she talks about language is absolutely enthralling. I'm interviewing her for an article that I'm writing this month for Toast. So that will be up by the end of the month. So I'll link it in my wrap up when I'll talk about this book a little bit more. But I cannot emphasize how much I loved it. All right, let's go into the kitchen and make some focaccia. Okay, so let's make some focaccia. Whenever I say focaccia, I always want to sing Cleopatra coming at you, but saying the catcher instead. Look, I'll, I'll spare you, I'll spare you. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to measure out 120 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, add a bit of pepper to that, and then you want to either crush, if you have a garlic crusher, or just chop really finely three garlic cloves and then add that to the olive oil along with a handful or so of fresh rosemary and put it to one side then you want to measure out 235 milliliters of warm water add a teaspoon of honey to that and then add a sachet which is seven grams of dried yeast whisk that together and then let it sit for a little bit in the meantime, when I say a little bit, I should probably more, be more specific really, shouldn't I? About five minutes, about five minutes. Then you want to measure out 315 grams of plain white flour, add a pinch of salt. Then after that five minutes has passed, you want to add the water yeast honey mixture to your flour and salt. And then add all of the oil, garlic and rosemary mixture apart from four tablespoons worth of oil. So you're going to leave that in the bottom of that cup for later. Then you want to mix everything together, put it out onto a surface and knead it for five minutes. And while I'm kneading this here, it seems like a very good opportunity to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have been working with Skillshare for many, many years now. They are an amazing online learning community. You can learn anything you want to learn about from their website. If there's something you would like to be able to achieve, if there is a skill that you would like to acquire, they have a video on that. And today I thought I would mention specifically their cooking videos, given that I am making bread here and a video that I particularly wanted to highlight a series of videos is one by Khalees who's talking about cooking 
as a process of identity and getting back to your roots and learning about yourself and your family history. It links in with what I was saying before about Polly Barton's book 50 Sounds and how memory and connection and learning are all quite sensual things, um, language being one of them, but cooking and food being such a sensual thing and how that is an innate part of who we are. It's a wonderful series of videos where she shows you how to make certain things, but also just talks about her relationship with food specifically. Skillshare have offered me a link, which I have put at the top of the description box down below. The first 1,000 people to click on that link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Skillshare have over 25,000 classes, as I said, on a variety of different things. And if you would like to stay on after the free trial, premium membership works out at about $10 a month. So definitely go and take advantage of that free trial. There's so much stuff over there. You can learn things for fun. You can um, take classes with a friend if you want to. They can do it remotely. You can do it remotely. There's a community section where you can share things that you're creating and talk to other people or you can just keep what you're doing to yourself if you would prefer. All of the classes are broken into very manageable time chunks so you can fit them around whatever schedule you happen to have. It is a wonderful, wonderful resource. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Once you have kneaded the dough for five minutes, you want to put it back inside the glass bowl, but this time line the bowl with a bit of olive oil and make sure it's all coated in the oil, cover it with a clean tea towel and leave it to rise for one hour. While that's rising, let me talk to you about some other favorites lying on the bed. So favorites that we have been watching notebook I made a list that's how serious this is um UK Drag Race I've had UK Hun stuck in my head for about five days now and I'm not even sorry about it we also watched Blown Away which is like the Great Pottery Throwdown or Great British Bake Off um but this is American and instead of making cakes or making pottery it's blowing glass and Mr. M really loves this one in particular because he um, sometimes gets a bit fed up with Great British Bake Off, I know, divorce, um, and shows like that because he finds them a bit too long, whereas Blown Away is only 20 minutes long and it's a series of glass making um, semi-professionals. They've been doing it a long time. Most of them have been doing it at least 10, 15 years and each week they are set a theme and they have to make something out of glass and it's just such a fascinating process. We also watched Lupin recently which is a French crime series. I would describe it as modern day Sherlock Holmes where Sherlock Holmes is stealing stuff. It's really good fun. There is also a very cute dog in it. I mentioned It's a Sin in another video recently, which was not a dedicated favourites video, but I'm sure you've heard everyone talking about it. It's as amazing as everybody says it is. If you haven't watched it, please do. And then the other weekend, we watched a film called Greenland because the internet had been pushing it everywhere. And I haven't been drawn to watching post-apocalyptic, dystopian, forget even the post, just the apocalyptic. I just haven't been drawn to watching that this past year or reading about it um, outside of real life stuff because that's enough. But for some reason, I felt like I wanted to watch it. Um, it's a film, it's only two hours long and it's starring Jared Butler and it is an apocalyptic film about a comet that is going to collide with the Earth. I think the only other film that I have seen that made me feel so anxious is Victoria. Is it a German film? I think it's a German film. And the reason it feels so anxious is, well, because it's high, high tension and high stakes, but because it's filmed in one take. And that makes it very difficult to breathe or let go because you're in the moment with the actors. Greenland is not filmed in one take, but it did give me that level of anxiety. So if you don't want to be scared and anxious, you know, for a change, then may maybe don't watch this film. 
but I have to give this film points because it really does look at how disabled people are treated in times of emergency, who is valued and whose lives are deemed worth saving. Trigger warnings for that because obviously it's it's an upsetting topic to see how people, non-disabled people, deal with those things and how they treat other people but I really appreciated that that was in that film because I think it's really important and something that we have witnessed over this past year. I would give it minus points for trying to show how in America during a time of the end of the world people who are deemed not American enough are going to be judged and uh, are going to be thought of as not worthy to be saved you know it, it should be people who were born here who were looked after the most they showed that through Jared Butler being Scottish and being born in Scotland and being judged for being in America as a Scottish born man I think maybe not showing that through a white straight non-disabled guy would have been more layered and and interesting and, and relevant but yeah so minus points for that but the film as a whole definitely kept me gripped slash terrified yeah on youtube recently i have been loving seiji's videos i've mentioned seiji before she is a booktuber she is dutch nigerian and she makes such such a, a variety of videos and I just love them all. I love it when she's talking about books, but I also love it when she's just vlogging random things in her life. She recently uploaded a video talking about how she tried to learn to skate last year. Um, and I think my favorite video of hers recently is a video where she's talking about failing her Japanese module at university. The amount of footage that she included in that, the amount of cuts between different shots on different days, I couldn't even imagine how many memory cards worth of footage that was. Like the dedication to making a film like that was admirable and the and the end product was was really wonderful to watch so i'll link that in the description box down below i've been going back and watching all of contrapoint's old videos natalie's videos i just want to bow down at her feet she is the queen she is royalty youtube royalty she makes video essays that are so intricate and so long they're normally over an hour long her most recent one is about cancel culture um being trans online and jk rowling and dissecting everything um that that came out of that whole debacle last year and the years preceding it and she gives such nuance to it and such passion and i think she's a gem and i'm sure that many of you have heard of her because her channel is not small but if you haven't please, please, please dedicate an hour and a half to watching that video because it's sublime. I've also been re-watching and enjoying new content from Rachel Maxey. Again, her channel is not small, so you may well have heard of her too. She makes costumes, she makes her own clothes, she has a very soothing presence, and recently she uploaded a video where she was painting a Victorian mural in her bedroom and doing a Q&A and it's just the kind of content that I want at the moment. And my favourite booktuber at the moment, and I think I do owe you a video, uh, a new video in my booktubers I love series where I talk about, surprisingly, all of the booktubers that I love. Um, my, my latest booktube discovery is Hannah May over at Let's Talk About Books Baby. She talks about books, she talks about living with um, chronic illness, um, she does reading vlogs which again very slow paced and soothing and it's what I'm drawn to at the moment. I have been watching all of her back blog of videos. Um, I think she only start, started making videos in August and I've been loving those very much. So I'll link everything that I can in the description box down below. Let's go and check on this bread. Okay, so it is an hour later. Hello. Let's see how much this has risen. A lot. Okay, that's great. Okay, so what you want to do now is you have the four tablespoons left over of the garlic, rosemary, um, olive oil goodness. So you want to put two of those into the bottom of a 
oven proof baking dish. You want to also put some up the sides as well because you don't want it to stick. So use your fingers for that. And then you want to, see all the air will come out. Pop that on here and stretch it across the length of the dish. Don't press down really hard because you don't want to knock all of the air out of it. Then you want to take, you can use your fingers for this, but I'm going to use a chopstick and you want to poke holes in it. Then you want to drizzle the remaining two tablespoons of olive oil and garlic and rosemary over the top. Preheat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius. Leave this to rest for 20 more minutes, then pop it in the oven for between 15 and 20 minutes until it's golden brown. enjoyed with a dip of olive oil and balsamic vinegar. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to know what things have been cheering you up recently. Let me know in a comment down below. Please go check out Skillshare as well as I said the first 1000 people to click on the link at the top of the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium and once those spaces are gone they are gone. They have so many resources. Go, 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 go check it out. I will be back soon with my January wrap up which I still haven't filmed yet. I'm sorry I'm a bit um, a bit behind on that. That will be the next video. I hope that you're all doing okay and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.